Today I want to talk to you about vacuum packing, particularly vacuum packing Mylar bags. Now any of you who have been following me or seen any of my other videos have watched me use this setup right here, which is a small vacuum pump uh, rigged into a particulate catch and then have, I have a modified um, basting injector, a meat injector, that has uh, been repurposed to be a vacuum needle. And uh, this is the results that this, this one gave me right here. But you know, for the last few weeks, I have been trying to figure out a way to efficiently vacuum pack Mylar bags in your freeze dryer. Now most people have done that and have made videos on how to do it and everything, but I've discovered something in my research, I've discovered a way to vacuum pack in your freeze dryer better than you can vacuum pack with this setup right here. I'm Evan Rowell and this is Critical Thinking. Now in the world of freeze drying, it's fairly common knowledge that you can use your freeze dryer to vacuum pack cur jars. I've even made a video on it myself. And, and how you do that is you make sure you got a nice clean edge and you put your, your top on it and then you very, very lightly uh, screw down on this lid. I mean really lightly. And then um, I'll show you how you vacuum pack. I'll go ahead and vacuum pack that jar. But the idea of vacuum packing Mylar bags in your freeze dryer is one that people relatively shy away from. Because what they do basically is they'll take a bag and they'll seal it up like this, this one right here, or this one right here, and uh, this one hasn't been vacuum packed yet, and they'll put it in the freeze dryer after it's been set up for vacuum packing. They'll turn on the freeze dryer and this bag will literally balloon up, okay? Uh, because as the pressure of the air on the outside of the bag begins to diminish, um, the pressure on the inside of the bag will begin to balloon up. And ideally, you'll have some place on this bag for that air to exit. Okay? And that's, um, that's okay. That will work to an extent, or, you know, to, to some extent. But it wasn't very efficient to me because what happens is when you cut that little tiny hole in the corner of your bag for that air to escape, the process of blowing up the bag causes that hole, which is, is initially flat, to become round. Okay, and, and granted, the air will escape out of it, but after it escapes, and you go ahead and release the vacuum in the barrel, before that vacuum has a chance to close that hole and, and try to suck it closed, you'll lose some of the vacuum in here. And the second problem with doing it that way is that when it balloons out, it puts a great deal of stress on your seal, okay, your impulse seal here. And uh, in my experimentation, I've even had them fail. And it just blows out. You, you blow out a little pocket here or something, or if you have the slightest imperfection in your bag, um, it'll, it'll, pop that, it'll pop out that imperfection. And I was very frustrated by that, and I, and I thought, you know, there's got to be a way to do this and I've discovered how to do this. I want to show you something. You see this bag here? I told you that I sealed this one with this unit right here. And I've had a lot of people talk to me and ask me uh, for more information on how to set one of these up. But if you don't want to have to go through all the, the you know, whatever it takes to purchase the pump and get the lines and the fittings and everything, because there's, there's, I have no set plan for it. I, I tell people what the parts are and, and you're pretty much on your own. So there are others that, that just don't want to do this, but they still want to be able to vacuum pack their bags like this. Well, I want to show you something. You see this bag right here? If you put that next to this one here, you can see that this bag has a tighter vacuum in it than this one does. Okay, This one's got a good vacuum. I'm satisfied with it. I'm not going to open it up and try to re-vacuum pack it. But this one, when I stumbled across this method of doing this, and I have to admit, it just came to me one day. The whole process just came to me one day. And I, wasn't, I was excited about it. I, I really wanted to, to try it. So I came down, and in one day, 
after trying a lot of different methods that failed, in one day I discovered a method that produced this one. This is my first one using this new method that I've got of uh, using the freeze dryer as a vacuum packer. And I was astonished. This vacuum pack looks commercial. Then when I looked at this, the only thing that I could think of to compare it to was Slim Jims. And we all know as you walking out the cash register in any store, their impulse section there will have um, uh, the meat sticks, the Slim Jim meat sticks that are vacuum packed in that plastic, you know, really have to open them up. And it's extremely tight. Well, this one is, this one is, probably has twice the vacuum that this one does, that I, you know, that I made with this machine. I, I sat there for a full 10 minutes looking at it, trying to find a soft spot in it that uh, would indicate that, you know, this vacuum wasn't any better than this one, but it is. It's 100% better. Here's another example. I, I quickly, I, I went ahead and if any of you have watched my lasagna video, the one I just put up uh, not too long ago, I show you a package of um, lasagna sauce that I had in eight little sections. When all those eight little sections fit into this bag, and I vacuum pack this puppy down. And again, the, the pack is absolutely tight. There's no loose spots. There's, it's, it's wonderful. Then I went ahead and I thought, well, I wonder how it will work on an uneven package. Same results. The vacuum pack on this was absolutely perfect. I couldn't believe. As a matter of fact, I had some lasagna noodles in here. And a full 10 or 15 minutes later, I was out here working on the table, and I heard one of these lasagna noodles snap. The, the vacuum pack was so tight in here that it eventually cracked one of these lasagna noodles. So with that, I'm going to show you how I did this, and we'll go back in there, and, and I'll let you watch it happen. But what I discovered, what I thought about was, you have to find some way to keep this bag from ballooning up. You don't want the bag to balloon up because if, if you can keep it from ballooning up, it won't put nearly the stress on the seams that, uh, that it has. But then there was always the problem of what about the hole? What about the hole that the, uh, the product esca escapes out of? Um, how do I keep that air from getting back in there? Well, the thing about ni or Mylar bags is that it naturally will close itself back up. Uh, when the vacuum on the inside of the bag is greater than the vacuum on the outside of the bag, it'll try to suck that hole closed. And the problem was, is that when you were, like I say, when you were doing the, when you were applying the vacuum, that hole would open up and it would actually stretch it out and it could deform it and you would lose part of the vacuum. So what I did is I thought, you know, there has to be a way to stop the, the bag from expanding. And I was looking at these pans as the other day, and I was thinking, you know, the whole thing came to mind. At first, I thought about using some masonite boards or something uh, to put between the, uh, to put the product between. And then I was in the kitchen, and I saw this pan here. Uh, this is a little six-dollar heavy aluminum pan. I got this at Walmart, and I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. So here, I thought I have some Velcro downstairs. And then here's the little clip. This little tiny paper clip, and this is important, it has enough, it's tight enough to hold these corners closed, but it's loose enough that when you get a, a lot of pressure inside of one of these bags, it'll, it'll allow the pressure to escape. And, and uh, what I'm getting ahead of myself here. So what I want to do is I uh, want to go ahead and we'll vacuum pack this one. Actually, I've got a couple of them that I'm going to vacuum pack. We'll vacuum pack this one, and this is another one of these, okay? This one looked like this one before I vacuum packed this one. And what I did on this one, because this is a flat surface, I decided to put it against the back side of this pan. And so you take a little bit of, of uh, Velcro here, and you put it under the pan. Okay, and then you take what it is that you want to vacuum pack, and you set it on there, 
And then you take the other pan with the bottom side down and you pull and you pull this as tight as you can. Okay. And this one's the same way. You pull these as tight as you can. All right. So now there you have it. Now that's going to stop that bag. As a matter of fact, I can make that one a little bit tighter. That's going to stop that bag from ballooning up. At least um, getting as big and round as a party balloon, which, which you want to avoid. Okay, so there you have that. Now, what you do is the same thing I always do with this machine, is I'll cut the corner of that off where you can see the two, this, the factory seal, and then my impulse seal where they come together, and I'll cut that off so that it just exposes a little tiny hole. You don't have to have a great big hole there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this off. Okay, so now there I have it. The impulse seal comes up there, but it doesn't quite meet the factory seal, so there's a little tiny bit of an opening. And here's where you take this clip. Okay, this clip is going to prevent that hole from opening up and getting really round. But it will allow the air to escape. So there I have it, right there. That's all you do. Now you go in and set up the freeze dryer. You put this in the freeze dryer. You draw your vacuum down. I, I do it down to about 3,500 millitors. And then when I release the vacuum, you're going to be amazed at what happens. Now I've already went ahead and done uh, this one. So when we go right now, I can put both of those in there and I can vacuum pack those at the same time. As a matter of fact, I'm quite sure that um, for the smaller bags, you might, even, you might even be able to put three of them in there, but you know, as easy as this is to do, I would probably just stick to doing two at a time. So with that, let's go in there and take a look at that freeze dryer. All right, so let's start at the beginning, okay? How to set the um, freeze dryer up to become a vacuum packer. And most people are very familiar with this because it's a perfect way to vacuum pack jars, but today, I'm going to show you how well this thing can actually vacuum pack a Mylar bag. So the first thing you do is you open up your freeze dryer and you're going to have to take the trays out for the shelving unit. And you do that by removing this large silicone seal, set it off to the side, and which time this tray will slide right out. Okay, now I have a table down here that I'll set that on. Now the plug has a red locking pin on it and you pull that red locking pin back and that'll allow you to depress a, um, a little clip here. And when you depress that clip, that will come right apart. And you just go ahead and you tuck that right back into there, okay? And then you can set this aside, which is what I'll do for now. And then what you do is you go ahead and put your rubber seal back on. Now to this point, um, this is pretty common knowledge about how to set this up. The only thing is, is with the new firmware that Harvestrite has put out, that's assuming you're working with a Harvestrite unit, the new firmware allows you to not have to unplug your vacuum pump from the back of the machine and plug it into the wall. Because the new firmware makes it very, very easy to test your pump and turn it on um, without plugging it into the wall. In other words, it's, it's become very, very much simpler. And here's a screenshot of this start screen. You see there it, has, it says customize, all right? And then here, after you press customize, it says test. And then you can go ahead and hit the test. And then it'll allow you to test your, your uh, freeze unit, your vacuum, your shelf heater, and your drain, and, and I don't think they use the drain right now, that's for another purpose, but um, anyhow, all I have to do is hit vacuum, and that vacuum pump turns on. And then when I hit done, um, it, it shuts off, and then you can go ahead and uh, release the vacuum on the inside. So the next thing I do is I take a Harvest, or a harvest Right tray, 
and I'll put it in here upside down and that gives me a flat surface from which to place my bags. Now the first thing that I want to show you is um, this jar. I have some potatoes here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it in the back and I'm going to allow it to seal. Again, it's a new lid. It has to be a new lid. Don't use a used lid or you lose the vacuum. And it has to be very, very clean. And then that lid, that top, has to be just to where it stops. Don't turn it any tighter, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and put that in the very back. So I got room for these. Now, I, want, I, you did, I didn't mention this before, but if you'll notice this one, I told you that I put the flat side of the trays down. Um, because this is a large bag and it was a flat surface. So I went ahead and did that. But on this one here, this is one of the smaller bags. And because it was a little bit rounded and because these pans fit on it so well, it just sandwiches in. You notice I put the bottom of the pan up on both sides and it's just clamping down on it. And it works really, really well. So I'll go ahead and I'll put that in there too. So there you have it. We have a setup ready to, um, to vacuum pack. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to close the drain valve. And now I'm going to go ahead and, and put a light on here too, so that you can see what's going on. Okay. And we'll go ahead and put it on this side. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the vacuum pump. And you're going to watch those bags almost immediately try to start to expand. But these clips, this is why it's important to, um, to use these types of clips. Uh, I, 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 I tried it with some of the little kitchen clips that you use to uh, close up a bag with or something. They're, they're not very stiff. And this thing just popped them right off. So you need to have something a little bit stiffer. And that's why I like to use these metal spring paper clips. But you can see it's filling up. I mean, the vacuum is, is being established in there, but the, uh, the bags are beginning to expand, but those pans are holding them flat. And what's that doing is that's actually causing the air to squeeze out of the bag without it ballooning up and becoming really, really big. Okay, so now we are at just over uh, 100,000 millitores. There's 100,000, there's 98. And I let it get down to about 3,500, takes about three minutes. But you can see those bags aren't being damaged by the pressure. Those bags, seven mil bags, are perfectly capable of handling the pressure. And that's another thing. That's why I like to use seven mil bags, because seven mil bags will vacuum pack very, very well and um, without exploding when you're trying to do this process here. And okay, we're at 51 millitores. Okay, there's 38, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press done. Now, wait, before I do that, I want you to watch those bags. I'm going to press done, and I'm going to open up the vacuum. Now, watch those bags. Look at that. Those bags are just, uh, the vacuum is just pulling those bags down incredibly well and what I do is I make sure that that clip stays on there and this will the vacuum will maintain for uh, quite some time provided those clips are holding that hole closed now let's take a look at this again that is very well vacuum packed that's not going to go anywhere and that will last, I've got jars in there that I've, I've uh, vacuum packed 22 years ago and they're still holding their vacuum pack. So when people say, oh, you know, it'll last for 18 months or 20 months, and you, you know, if you do it right and you maintain the sanitation and it's clean, uh, you don't have to worry about that. So anyhow, let's go ahead and we're gonna seal up those holes. Let's take them off of there and take a look at what kind of a vacuum we've got on these things. And as I expected, as has happened before, the vacuum on that is amazing. And you know what? Let's take that clip off there. And that vacuum is so intense. 
and this clip managed to hold that thing closed that now that this vacuum's in here, that hole has pretty much closed itself up. So I don't have to rush to get, to get the hole sealed up. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna impulse seal it. That's a good seal. And there you have it. What I have in here is uh, fettuccine and chicken flavored sauce and shredded cooked pork and whatnot. But it's in there and that is an extraordinarily good vacuum. Let's go ahead and take a look at this other one. Okay. There is that uh, lasagna sauce again. Again, I don't even have to the vacuum is so intense that it's holding that hole closed. The air was able to escape, but this uh, paper spring clip, we've all seen them. And you, you, the, the big one here, this, I found that this is the, it, the best size because it will hold that uh, Mylar bag together, but at the same time, um, it's strong enough, or it's not so tight that it won't let the air out. So there's a really good vacuum. And to look at that, you might even think that it's not necessary to seal this hole. But I'll guarantee you that if you don't, eventually um, that there's going to be a little bit of airflow through that. And you're going to lose your air, you're going to lose your vacuum. So there's that one. So just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and do this big one. All right. I want you to look at this. You see there's no vacuum on that. There's lots of air, it moves around and whatnot. But um, on this one, I'm gonna use both the front side and the back side. This side is flat, okay? So I'm going to, I'm gonna put the flat side of the pan up against that. Putting this on there with the flat side down. And then putting this one on here with the inside of the tray down, okay? And I'm, okay, so what we got, you see the, the pans there. I'm gonna go ahead and put this clip on it. All right, let's put this one in there. Matter of fact, as you can see it better, let's put the clip at the back of this one. And you can watch this side vacuum pack, okay? Close this, turn on the light. Again, customize, test, and um, turn on the vacuum pump. Now watch this here. The first thing it'll do is it'll try to balloon up. As soon as it can't balloon up anymore, that air will start to squeeze out from between that, pa that um, paper clip and right now we're at 195 millitors there's 183 177 that uh, pump is drawing a, a vacuum on that very efficiently very quickly okay, anyhow okay there's 3,000 and that's good so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this you can watch this bag okay we're done release the vacuum And there you have that one. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Again, I am amazed that this, oh, okay, here's the problem. All right, see, we've lost our vacuum in this. The reason that we've lost our vacuum in this is that clip wasn't placed properly on that backing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again. I'm not gonna make you wait through it. Give me a second, I'll, I'll do this up again here and I'll, and I'll show you the results here in just a minute. Okay, so there you have it. I went ahead and resealed this one. I went through the whole process again. I've sealed the hole off and that um, vacuum pack is extraordinary, okay? You wouldn't expect uh, a commercial vacuum packing um, 
shop or, or, or factory or any place else to be able to vacuum pack something that's any harder than that. It, it's just not going to happen. So with that, let's go ahead and put our freeze dryer back together so I can show you how easy this is to do. Take the rubber off. Plug the tray back in. Put the rubber back on here. And now I am literally, I'm ready to go. That took less than a minute. Now I can start it up again and set it to my next batch, having vacuum packed three uh, bags extraordinarily well. I'm very, very happy with this. As a matter of fact, this, hap this does this so well that I may use this as my method of choice um, rather than my unit out there. And if you don't have the unit out there and you want to vacuum pack like this, this is how you do it. Just get yourself some trays. As a matter of fact, if you don't have these trays, you can actually use the trays that come with the unit, okay? You just put your, your bag in between them, sandwich them, wrap them. With these, I'd probably use three Velcro, and you can stick it in there and it'll fit, okay? And uh, if you have four trays, then you can do two bags at a time. It doesn't take very long. Okay, and uh, it is very, very effective. So with that, please, I'd encourage you to hit that notification bell, share, like, subscribe. You know the routine. And as usual, visit my gallery. Take a look at my image, uh, my, my photography. Tell me what you think. So with that, I'm Evan Rowell, and this is Critical Thinking about vacuum packing with your freeze dryer.